Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update video today. We'll go through some of the news that has caught my attention in the Spanish press today and yesterday. Some stories that I think you will be interested in. Now, as you can see, it's a sunny day today here in Madrid. A little bit cloudy. Uh, the sun gets covered up by the clouds every now and again, but it is quite cold. Around 8 degrees Celsius today. Not snowing in this part of the country but in many parts of the central and northern parts of Spain today, quite a snowy day. Got my cup of coffee, and that's going to keep me warm while I go through the news. So let's get stuck into the news. And the first thing we're going to look at today is the supermarket price cap that the government is talking about, or part of the government at least is talking about. The Podemos side of the government is talking about a price cap, bringing prices back to 2022 prices at the supermarket before the war broke out in Ukraine. That's what they're planning to do. And uh, according to big supermarket chains in this country, not a good idea. Let's have a look. So this story here from El Mundo, supermarkets warn that food price caps will lead to losses for the sector within nine weeks. A blunt warning from the supermarkets to the coalition government if they intervene in the market as United Podemos has proposed to the PSOE to make the basic shopping basket cheaper, the sector will be making losses in a matter of two months. This is the warning from the National Association of Large Retailers, which represents companies such as Carrefour, El Campo and El Corte Inglés, sources who insist that setting maximum sales prices that prevent supermarkets from passing on cost increases would take the whole sector into the red in little more than nine weeks. So, as we can see, large supermarket chains, for example, Carrefour, El Campo, El Corte Inglés, not happy with the Podemos idea to put a cap on supermarket prices because, as they say there, it will drag them into the red in around nine weeks' time. So, uh, as I said, supermarket chains, the big ones, not happy with the idea of price cap. Let me know what you think, if it is a good idea or not, for the government to intervene in the supermarket industry, put price caps on basic food products in order to help out consumers. As I said, let me know in that comment section below. Now we'll move on, second piece of news today. We saw in last night's live stream how the Balearic government is planning a ban on house sales to people that are not residents of the Balearic Islands, whether that be Mallorca, Ibiza, Menorca, for example. And uh, a lot of people not happy about that idea. Uh, people think that uh, intervening in the market is not a good idea. We saw it before with supermarkets and also when it comes to foreign house sales or non-residence house sales in places like the Balearics where there is pressure on locals because they basically can't get into the real estate sector. And this piece of news caught my attention today. And as we can see here, 78.8% of buyers of second homes in the Valencia region in 2022 were foreigners. Almost 80% of the people who bought a second home through real estate agents in the Comunidad Valenciana in 2022 were foreigners, as were 70.1% of those who bought a home for investment purposes. However, both purchases of second homes and those destined for investment experienced a decrease compared to 2021, a decrease that the president of the Association of Real Estate Agents of the Valencian Community, Nora Garcia, attributes to the intractable prices of the sector and the change in travel habits. One of the causes could be that prices have risen a lot and everything that is not a necessity, second homes, is left for a better occasion. So a problem in the Balearic Islands where locals can't access the property market there because homes are too expensive, too many foreign buyers, leading the government to try to take decisions to improve the situation. As we can see here in the Valencia region, 78.8% of buyers of second homes there were foreigners. So uh, big investment coming from foreigners, not only in the Balearics, but also in places like the Valencian community and also Andalusia, no doubt. So uh, pressure on locals to be able to afford to buy property with so much foreign investment coming into the country. And uh, no doubt the Valencian government will soon react to this also. Now, Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez is making headlines today, not because of local politics, but because of what he's doing in Davos. The uh, conference currently being held in Davos in Switzerland. All of the important world leaders get together. All of the important business leaders get together. And they discuss what is going to happen in the world in coming years. And Pedro Sanchez, as I said, making headlines because he gave a speech yesterday and he criticized the far right and especially the uh, rise of far right parties in 
the European Union. As we can see here, Pedro Sanchez urges the far right to stop them from destroying the EU from within. The threat is very real, said Mr. Sanchez. Pedro Sanchez has used his speech in Davos to call for the far right to be stopped in the face of support from the Conservatives. He called for preventing far right parties from reaching the institutions and destroying the European Union from within. We have to fight the rotten seeds that Putin has planted in our own countries. Let us not forget that the Russian autocrat is not alone in his reactionary aspiration to fracture the world and turn back the clock. He has many allies in Europe. Now they hide their sympathies and connections with Putin, but just a year ago they visited him and praised his ways, Prime Minister Sanchez said. So, according to Mr. Sanchez, far-right extremism in Europe, or the threat of far-right extremism in Europe, is very real, and obviously talking from experience. Uh, lately here in Spain, there's been a controversial case in the region of Castilla y Leon. As we know, there were elections held there last year, and Spain's far-right party Vox got into government, and uh, they're a bit controversial at the moment because they want to pass a new abortion law, and of course all of the left-wing parties here in Spain are up in arms because they don't want that abortion law to be modified because it went through the courts here last year or went through the parliament here last year, and uh, left-wing governments are happy with it. But Vox is apparently not. And uh, as I said, I think Mr. Sanchez here is talking from experience, and he doesn't want political parties like Vox let into more governments, especially through coalitions. Now, I know what a lot of people are going to say. Mr. Sanchez is in a coalition government with a far-left party, but he doesn't want far-right politics getting into government. So uh, could he be called a hypocrite? I don't know, but I'm sure that some people would be labeling him a hypocrite currently. But then again, as many people have told me recently, the far right is not the same as the far left. I'll let you guys decide. And the final piece of news we'll look at today relates to the tourism sector in this country and the recovery post-pandemic that the tourism sector has experienced in 2022. As we can see here, the tourism sector says that it has overcome the pandemic and starts 2023 with optimistic figures. Contrary to the most ominous forecasts, neither the impact of the war in Ukraine nor the fall in household purchasing power due to inflation have managed to dampen the recovery in tourism. This activity, whose weight in the economy is now close to what it was before the pandemic, has returned to pre-crisis levels of income and employment, although a full recovery in international tourist arrivals is still pending. It is in this situation that the sector's major international meeting, FITUR, which kicks off this Wednesday, is approaching with a big question on the minds of all those involved. How long will the urge to travel continue? So an interesting question being posed there, will people still have the urge to travel in 2023 like they did in 2022 post-pandemic. Now, we all know what it's called. It's called revenge travel, I think. Uh, people that uh, are willing to pay any price to travel, and that has increased prices, airline prices, hotel prices, and the like. And we'll see if the trend continues in 2023. I imagine that it will. I think people are still keen to travel because being stuck at home for two years wasn't nice for a lot of people and people have money in the bank and are willing to get out there and spend their money, and Spain hoping to uh, get a big share of that market. 67 million people visited the country last year, I think, and uh, the government is optimistic, or the tourism industry is optimistic, that more people will visit Spain in 2023, more than those 67 million that came here last year. So let us know if you're planning a trip to Spain in 2023 to add to those millions of people that enjoy this country throughout the year. Let us know. Now, we'll go into the comment section. We'll see what has been happening there. We've got this one here from Stephen. I don't know what you're on about. The supermarkets in Torre Vieja are fantastic for fresh meat and fish. Now, this comment relates to an article that we saw on the channel last week about how some supermarkets in this country uh, didn't rank very highly when it comes to fresh meat and fish. The two supermarkets that didn't rate very well, I think, were Dia and Mercadona. I could be mistaken, but I think those were the ones that were mentioned. And other supermarkets, El Corte Inglés supermarkets, did very, very well. And various people over the last week or so have commented on uh, the quality of meat that they buy in this country, the quality of meat and the quality of fish. And as we can see here, Stephen saying that, uh, I don't know what I'm on about, where he lives here in Spain, the meat and fish is of a fantastic quality. So congratulations there, Stephen, and I'm glad to see that you have found a good supermarket for your fresh produce. But it can't be denied that some supermarkets are a little bit substandard when it comes to fresh products. Deer, especially, as I mentioned before, 
and uh, for many people, Mercadona uh, is not up there when it comes to fresh fish and meat. But uh, that's just my opinion and the opinion of many people who have left comments on the topic over the last week or so. Another comment here from Ken, coffee in the supermarkets is pretty bad in Spain. There was only one brand of whole beans that didn't have sugar in it and occasionally sold out, Nestle. So sometimes I had to go to the Caniceria Jamonería Gastronomo to purchase Illy coffee at more than double the price. Have to admit, I never took coffee at the two bakeries in town. Yeah, Ken, thanks for the comment and thanks for adding to the great coffee debate that we have had on this channel many times over the years. People say that coffee here in Spain is not very good myself included. Other people say that coffee is wonderful here in Spain, fantastic coffee, but uh, I personally, as I said before, and Ken agrees, that uh, coffee quality in Spain uh, leaves a little bit to be desired. And the main problem, as Ken points out, is that a lot of the coffee sold in supermarkets, when you buy a little packet of coffee to put into your coffee machine, contains sugar, because that's what the majority of the population here in Spain is used to. I said yesterday that if you want a decent cup of coffee, in my opinion, what I call a decent cup of coffee, you have to go to a specialty coffee shop. You might pay a little bit more, but you are guaranteed to get a good cup of coffee, and that's important, unlike the one that I have here, which is uh, drinkable, but uh, leaves a lot to be desired, which, as I said before, is uh, common here in Spain. Another comment here from Diego. As a Spaniard, my favorite plato de cuchara stew is la olla aranesa, a local dish from the Bahia de Aran. And believe me, winter there deep in the Pyrenees is quite cold and snowy. The dish has it all and its taste is incredible. Yeah, Diego, thanks for the comment. And this is a topic that also popped up in yesterday's live stream about the platos de cuchara, which I said are a favorite of Spaniards. They're uh, basically dishes that you need to eat with a spoon, for example, a nice lentil dish, or some of the stews here in Spain, and the one that uh, Diego points out here, La Olla Aranesa, which, as he points out, is a local dish in the Aran Valley, which is in Catalonia, I believe. So this is one of the many platos de cuchara that Spanish people enjoy at this time of the year when it's cold. For example, today, when the temperature doesn't get above 10 degrees Celsius, uh, one of these platos de cuchara, a nice Spanish stew, goes down very well indeed. In fact, so well, I might order one for lunch. And the final comment today comes from John. Hi, Stu. I'm a new member and love your show. My wife says it's the only time I'm quiet for an hour. I love your format. But those bottles of wine were clearly different sizes. I'm Irish and I know. Keep up the great work. Yeah, John, thanks for the comment. And this is another thing that popped up in the live stream yesterday. I showed a meme of two bottles of wine, one in a Spanish supermarket and one in an Irish supermarket, the same bottle. In Spain, the bottle cost $3.99, I think, and in Ireland, it was around $12.99 or maybe even €13.99. And John says that the uh, size of the bottle was different. Maybe in the Irish supermarket, it was a magnum of wine, a 1.5-litre bottle of red wine, hence the price, whereas in Spain, it was a 750ml bottle of wine, also hence the price. But I went online, John, and uh, I think you might be wrong. I found this wine here, Faustino, here in Spain, 750 ml bottle, five euros and 19 cents in the supermarket. And at Tesco's in Ireland, the same bottle of wine costs 12 euros. So more than double the price. And I think yesterday, John, the picture, although it looked a bit distorted, I think it was the same size bottle and a huge difference in price. And uh, no wonder people go a little bit over the top when they come down here to Spain, see how cheap alcohol is, especially in supermarkets, get a little bit drunk and sometimes cause problems. But uh, one of the best things about living here in Spain, especially if you like to drink red wine and also drink beer, uh, is the cheap prices of the product. Now on that note, I'm gonna wrap this video up. Thank you very much for watching. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Let us know what you pay for a bottle of Spanish wine in your local supermarket, whether it's in the UK, Ireland, Australia, the States, Canada, wherever you are around the world, let us know what you pay. And if the prices are similar to what we saw here in Spain, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'm freezing cold, so I've gotta go inside. I'll see you in the next video. Hasta luego.